a little break in between since we wrapped it up last week. I figured this week, being the week it is, we could do the Christmas story. A lot of you adults have already heard this your whole lives, but instead of just reading it from chapters Matthew and Luke, or from the books of Matthew and Luke, I'm just going to put it together, kind of like I do on Thursday nights. So it'll be a fun little, I don't know, just a whole play on how it happened from beginning to end. So Jesus' early life. We'll be going over some of these topics here. So Jesus' early life, if you want to know about this biblically, it's in Matthew 1 through 3 or Luke chapter 1 through 3, but it starts at 26 in Luke when you're going through. So first things first, a long time ago, he was promised. So Jesus' story doesn't just start in these chapters, it starts way back in the Old Testament. A whole bunch of different prophecies and scriptures that have words foretelling of a Savior coming. This is just a few from Isaiah. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. So this is talking about Jesus when he was born Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And choose the good when he was tempted to Satan, which is like his first thing before his ministry started and everything. And he chose good rather than all of the evil. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And Micah 5, But thou, Bethlehem Ephraim, though thou be a little amongst the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been told from old, from everlasting. So this is even, he's saying, look, we've been saying this a long time. And this is a long time ago when he said that. So that's why I put it a long time ago, I guess. So who remembers the story of Abraham? <clears throat> he had a son named Isaac. And God was like, hey, Abraham, listen, I know this is weird, but I'm going to need you to kill your son, Isaac. So he's like, well, that is weird, God, but you, know, you are God. I'll listen to you. I'll obey you. Took him up to the mountain to sacrifice him. And then God was like, okay, hold up. That was a test. It wasn't a temptation, remember. We're, not, we're tempted is not of God, but God can give us tests and trials. So what happened because Abraham passed this trial? God said, from your seed, this is a little kid's version of it, so the kids know what I'm talking about. I thought that was a funny picture. <laughs> Just a <laughs> but to kill a kid. Anyway, so, so that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. So when you think about asking a father to sacrifice his son, he had to get it. He had to be like, man, this is really awful, but I have to do it. I have to sacrifice it for the greater good. This was a test for God, because he was about to sacrifice his son, finding a worthy seed vine to willing to sacrifice their son. It's kind of one and the same, but one's a human, one's a divine aspect. So if he was ready or willing to sacrifice his son, God understands that he gets it. And so from his seed, as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. <coughs> now, let's not get confused here in Galatians 3. <clears throat> this is New Testament. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So, that leads way to the begats. Anybody ever read those? We've got the Gary likes them, told everybody to check it out. But, you get down through the begats, and this is them tracing their lineage all the way from Abraham, down from Isaac, all the way, you know, we can see here and read all of them, but it's quite a bit. And to Elia begat Elazar, Elazar begat Mathen, Mathen begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So from Abraham's seed to Isaac's seed, all the way down all those begats, through Solomon, through King David, eventually it got to Joseph, the husband of Mary, 
who is the direct descendant of Abraham, in which is Christ's father. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon, Christ are 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse of Joseph before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. So we go from Abraham willing to sacrifice, so God chose him to do a similar sacrifice to what he was about to do. We get down to where Jesus is born. Enter the angel Gabriel. So one day I guess they were just hanging out. I don't really know what they were doing, but Gabriel appeared. And he appeared first unto Mary. I don't know if he appeared first unto Mary, but he appeared unto Mary right about the same time. So Luke 1, 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. You know, I just kind of noticed something right there. The sixth month. What's the Jewish six months? Probably the same, right? June? So, that's, that's pretty interesting. It happened in summer. In the story of Christmas, you hear this happen. It's not happening in the winter over there. But So, the sixth month. Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall... Cut that off a little bit. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mary has Jesus. So this is the angel appearing unto Mary. I don't know what it looked like. Probably something like this. Might have been scary too. Now enter Joseph. So all this is happening to Mary. And imagine being a husband. And your wife just comes up to you and starts saying all this stuff to you. You're going to be like, okay, something crazy is happening. So a little bit of divine intervention had to come to Joseph too. So let's go to Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus was on the wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. And if you track this back, it goes to Deuteronomy where Moses said, write a bill of divorcement if she is unfaithful. So he was like, well, she's pregnant, my wife's unfaithful. Probably, I don't want to like embarrass her in front of everybody, but I'm going to go about writing this bill of divorcement because it can't be having childs out of wedlock and stuff. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. We read that earlier. Which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So, this is the angel appearing to Joseph. Again, I don't know what it looks like. We just got some good drawings. I like this one though. I think it's from the same artist because kind of similar tones, but the angel's just poking. With a stick. I don't know why. But I thought that was the funniest picture I found. <laughs> hey, wake up. I gotta tell you something. So, to Bethlehem. Look how cool that is. That's Bethlehem right now. Isn't that sweet? All these ancient replicas, ancient cities. That's what it looks like now, modern day. Walking through the streets. I always thought those looked really cool. But, <clears throat> Bethlehem's just right below Jerusalem where everything's happening, and then you get up to the northeast, and that's where Israel is today. Uh, Church of the Nativity, right between the Dead Sea. You guys get it. Luke 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this tax was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. So Rome had pretty much conquered everybody at this point, and 
That was very expensive to do, so they would tax everybody every year. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own city <coughs> should be delivered. What happened there? So Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house lineage of David. So they all had to go back to their home city, their home country, do pay these taxes, because it was very hard to track. You know, they didn't have internet, they didn't have tracking systems. So everyone had to come back home where their records were to pay the tax. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. So of course, worst timing ever, he had to go back to the city with his greatly pregnant wife. I guess that means eight, nine months, you know, ready to pop. And she gets down there, and now she goes into labor while they're there in the city. The birth. So Jesus is born there. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothing and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Because the town was probably pretty packed. Everybody that lived there to come back to pay taxes all had to swarm this little city. So probably went a lot of places for people to stay. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. So, we all know the nativity scenes in our head. There's Jesus, he's in a manger. Then some shepherds come and see him. So the imagine is being chilling out in the field, which isn't they don't also do in winter, so it's how you kind of know it wasn't exactly this time of year. But and then just a big light, like an alien thing. So what we would imagine is a great light and an angel showing for him. He said, Hey, go check this out. We need witnesses and everything. So then, having just seen a great, powerful angel, it was like, Okay, we're gonna go. So then we get to the birth with these people, the wise men. So Matthew 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So now you have the wise men coming up, three wise men. It never really said how long it took them to get there. I don't know if he was still a baby when that happened, but it's right in the same thing. And when they would come to the house, they saw the young child with the Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented to him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So here we have the three gifts. I don't think it was actually in gold bars, though. But, you know, he brought them some gold. We all know what gold is. So frankincense. Has everybody ever smelled frankincense before? No? Nobody's ever smelled it? If they come out, like, they got sense and stuff. I'll get some, kind of like I did with the other thing. They're putting in deodorant and all that stuff. I thought you said smoke. Smoked frankincense? Yeah. I would not advise smoking frankincense. <laughs> <clears throat> so you can smell it. That's what I was saying. So it is used as an incense, kind of like uh, you know the essential oils that have all that. And myrrh, now, you can drink myrrh. And if you drink mine, wine mingled with myrrh, it is kind of a painkiller and diluted. However, it is also used as... You know, smells. So don't drink it. Jesus refused it, so you should too, right? But that's what the Roman soldiers used to drink out at night when it's super cold. They weren't having a good time. They would drink wine mingled with myrrh so they could, you know, take the edge off a little bit. But I don't think they brought it to Jesus for that purpose. It is also used as an incense or used in perfumes and stuff like that. And so now we can go on Amazon, type in frankincense and myrrh, and order it. Comes to our door in the form of oil rocks like this or any kind of minerals but back then really hard to find and then once you found it is plants so it's really hard to make that out of plants back in the day too so these were very good gifts very prestigious gifts worthy of Jesus if so best they had but you know who else also liked gold frankincense and myrrh this guy King Herod so around this time when Jesus was born he was the one that actually sent the wise men. They came to him first, but he kind of put them on a mission. He wasn't about somebody to come in and take his throne or the prophecy being fulfilled while he was the one on the seat. 
So Matthew 2. When Herod had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of people together, he demanded of them Christ be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet Israel, And thou of Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So again, it said there comes a governor. He was a governor at the time. He didn't know what was about to happen. If he was about to be taken over prophetically or what, but he didn't want to lose his power. So then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. So he's kind of setting up a trap. He's like, hey, I want to come worship this guy too. So you guys go out and find him. When you find him, come tell me where he's at. So I can go down there and bring my gifts, go with frankincense and myrrh, and death. He's going to do some bad stuff. So when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till, I, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they went to their own country another way. They didn't leave the same way they came in. That's a pretty good tactic if you're ever being followed or don't want anybody to come on your trail. So, God warned them in a dream. He's like, hey, Herod's tricking you guys. He's setting you guys up to deliver the location of Jesus so he can come in with his people and kill them because he wants to keep power. So, I'm glad you guys are here, but don't go back and tell Herod, and they did it. So then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. So because he just couldn't find the one single location of Jesus, he just took the buckshot approach, the scorched earth approach. It's like, look, we're just going to kill every baby then, because I'm not losing my power. Can you imagine? Okay, I was in the army, and there's a lot of people I know is in the military in some form. You guys even. Imagine you were in the military. What if President Trump, Biden, whoever, both of them, let's say they were like, alright, listen, man, Florida's being weird. We're going to go kill all the children three years and under in Florida. Are you going to do it? Dude, there's no way I would do that. I wouldn't kill any... If they told me to do that to babies in Afghanistan, I wouldn't even do it. I'd be like, no, you're like going to kill a bunch of babies. But back then, I don't understand, but they were like, okay, cool, we'll just go kill all the babies then. I don't know. I guess they paid them a lot or imported foreigners to do it. Something. Something weird had to happen. But, in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, so every child two years old and under in that area, Herod sent to be killed. And according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, in Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Jeremiah 31, 15 is where this prophecy is coming from, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, and bitter weeping. Rahel, Rachel, Rahel, whatever, weeping for her, because, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children, because they were not. So it's just showing the prophecy is now coming to be fulfilled. So that takes us to Egypt. How I many of you guys knew Jesus lived in Egypt for a little bit? Probably for a pretty good while, actually. So Egypt, same Egypt thinking of, pyramids, sphinx, and all of that. And that is 429 miles away, just in case you guys ever decide you want to walk that, just like Jesus had to flee from. So they had to get pretty far away, which tells me that this king had a pretty good stretch of power, a pretty good reach. So right across that little river here, the Gulf of Suez, you get into Africa. So they were in the Middle East. Now they are out of Israel and into Africa. I think that is modern day, modern day Egypt. So it's still around like Cairo area. So still Egypt. It takes seven hours and thirty minutes to fly there. So pretty far away to go on foot. It's a pretty treacherous journey too because until you get to that river, half of your journey. You have to dodge the authorities from that. The authorities that are looking to kill all kids. So similar to Moses, which was also where? Egypt. Kind of going the other way at this point. Now, now we're coming back to Egypt to avoid getting our children killed. So Matthew 2, 13. When, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. 
and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. So again, another prophecy, Old Testament, coming to fruition here. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. So now this angel, I'd be afraid to go to sleep if I was Joseph. He has a lot of dreams, just angels. Like coming out, I'm like, ah, okay, that was just an angel. It's like a third time this is happening. So, and he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. So now they went back 429 miles by foot or camel. It couldn't have, you know, taken a car or a train or anything back then. It was a pretty long journey. But when he had heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding. Being warned of God in a dream, again, another dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. So, going to Galilee now. <clears throat> Here's where you get Jesus, the Galilean. And Galilee, for those of you who don't know, Nazareth and Galilee, pretty much the same thing, but Nazareth is a city in the land of Galilee back then. So, it's actually a really beautiful place if you look at it. A lot of sand and stuff, but right on the ocean. So, Jesus of Nazareth, when he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. We're fulfilling all kinds of prophecies coming down with Jesus. So, Christmas today, I know it was a little bit quicker than normal, but it's not a whole lot. I could have read both chapters to you, but I just kind of merged them together. A quick lesson for that. We as a church and as a people don't need to take that stuff for granted. So, you know, Jesus wasn't born like, hey, I'm born now, everybody came, gave him gifts, and he just chilled out until he was 30-something and then started his ministry. His whole life up to that point, he was in hiding, going from left to right, people trying to kill him from the day he was born. Even during his ministry, he constantly had to leave cities so people were trying to kill him, always in danger of his life. None of us really know what it's like to be hunted by people. So... I can imagine that would do something to his psyche, but he didn't care. He followed it anyway. His dad obeyed God, obeyed the angels in the dreams. So, I know like the festivities we do, candy and presents and all that stuff, they're awesome. They're what makes Christmas, you know, Christmas for the holiday sense. But the price was paid for our souls and not the holiday. So Jesus was born and didn't go through all of that so we could have presents, of course. He went through all of that so that we could be saved. And to honor that, when we do come together, we do give gifts like the wise men, we do give you know, homage and visiting, we do visit family members and make journeys from that. So, let us celebrate Christmas. Regardless of that, it might not have been this time of year, it might not. It's the time of year we celebrate the birth. It's the time we celebrate all that stuff we just talked about happening. So, let's take it back from Santa Claus. I like that picture, so I'll put it there again. Yeah. Any questions on that? The birth and early life of Jesus, according to Mark, <coughs> Luke, and the Old Testament a lot. No questions. Chuggy, you got a question? Gotcha. Hello, everyone. Still here. Do you have questions? You can ask too.